So welcome to another accounting video. Today uh, accounting one, so first year, June 2010 and then specifically question three part B. Um, the June 2010 paper isn't actually on the AQA website I believe but if you just google it you can find it straight away. So it's still an AQA paper it's just not on their website. <clears throat> So essentially we're given a, a set of information, dif additional information, and we're given the bare bones or the main area of an income statement, and we're going to lift this information plus all this into a balance sheet and hopefully it balances. So we're going to go through these points, see how they affect themselves in isolation, but also see how do they affect the profit for the year. It's like there's an accrual here, but it hasn't been accounted for in here, so we're going to see how does that accrual affect the profit, how does that prepayment affect the how does depreciation affect profit? Yada. So exactly, it's just going through every point and seeing how they affect everything, essentially. So we'll just go straight on to part one and the accrual. So part one, wages owing at the 31st of April 2010 amount to 1210. So we owe an, we owe an expense. It's an accrual. You know that. 1210. Oh. So, we haven't accounted for this, and what wages do is they increase expenses, don't they? Which is going to decrease profit, and we haven't accounted for it, so we're going to have to decrease our profit figure, aren't we? Because if we had accounted for this accrual before we got to this figure, the profit figure would be lower, wouldn't it? Because we'd have more expenses because of the accrual, wouldn't we? So we're just going to take 36,000, the profit figure, and take off 1210. And that gives us 34,790. So we've got a new profit figure now. So on to part two. Rates paid in advance, prepaid expense, at the 30th of April 2010, amounted to £1,600. So prepayment, prepaid expense, if you like, is £1,600. So we've just affected the profit figure with an accrual, so we're going to have to affect the profit figure with the prepayment, aren't we? It's as simple as that. So we're going to take this uh, this new figure now. We've updated the profit figure. So this 36,000 now is gone. It's history. We don't need to care about it anymore. And a prepayment decreases expenses, so we're just going to add it on. Decreases expenses, brings up profit. It's just the reverse in a sense, isn't it? It's the reverse to an accrual. 36. 90. So our new profit figure, 36, 390. Working free. So depreciation is to be provided on motor vehicles at 20 cent per annum using the straight line method. So it's as simple as that. So we'll work out what the depreciation charge is and then we'll worry about the other things once we've calculated this depreciation. So how do we do straight line? We just take the cost, 18,400 and times by the percentage of the straight line which is 0 0.2 and that gives us 3680 so that's our charge for the year essentially isn't it and we haven't accounted for it have we and it's an expense so our profit's going to be decreased isn't it because we've ign we've forgot about an expense so we're going to add it in to increase our expenses and therefore decrease profit so take that all that profit figure here 36 390 and take away 3680 giving us 32710 so we've dealt with the income statement but we need to deal with the balance sheet now don't we we've got more ex we've got more depreciation on our asset so the motor vehicle net book value equals the cost minus this depreciation we've calculated and minus the provision as well. The, prov the, the provision is the depreciation that's happened to the asset before this year. That's all it is. And that comes to 7360. So that's going to be a non-current asset in our balance sheet. As simple as that. Working for So the value of inventory stock at the 30th of April 2010 has been overstated by three thousand pounds so it's been overstated so what do we need to do well we valued it too high so our closing inventory 
needs to go down. Closed inventory is taken away from our cost of sales, isn't it? So t bringing it lower, decreasing our closed inventory is going to increase our cost of sales. Cost of sales, abbreviated, will go up, meaning profit, because cost of sales is taken away from our income, isn't it? Will go down. So just working out that way is a lot easier. So our new profit figure equals this figure, 32710. And we know that this this difference, this 3000, is going to decrease profit. So I'm just going to take away 3000. I don't need to mess about doing lots of complex calculations within the cost of sales and within the closing inventory, etc. So we've got a new profit figure now. But let's also just remember that our closing inventory here will have to be decreased by 3000, won't it? And that's probably just worth noting as well here, isn't it? Closing inventory, because it's a current asset, isn't it? We're going to be including it, so we might as well just note it down to make sure we don't get it wrong. 2640 minus 3000 gives us 17640. So that's going to be a current asset, essentially, isn't it? Working five, a loan repayment of £500 appears on the bank statement but has not yet been recorded in the accounting records. So we haven't accounted for it, the bank may well have accounted for it, but that doesn't matter to us does it? We're drawing up our balance sheet and our income statement and we haven't accounted for it. So what we'll first off do is just uh, look at the loan. So we've repaid part of our loan, we had a £4,500 loan but we've just paid £500 of it. So we've repaid some of the loan, therefore the loan decreases. £4,000. And if you notice, the loan is repayable on the 31st of December 2010. And that's within 12 months of this date. So it's worth just noting that this is a CL, a current liability. It's not a non-current liability like most loans are. However, we've not accounted for the payment, have we? Yes, it does appear on the bank statement, but in our T accounts, our journal entries, we haven't accounted for it, have we? So our bank figure in our uh, in our uh, journals and our T accounts has not been edited for this repayment. So we had an overdraft of 1120, and we've just lost another £500 because we paid for it, haven't we? So that leaves us with negative 1620. So we've still got a bank overdraft, it's just got worse essentially. So that's W5, W6. A cheque for £1,200 received from a trade debtor, so someone who owes us money, on the 30th of April 2010 has not yet been recorded for. So we'll do the easy thing first. Bank. So we had negative 620, 1620, sorry we received £1,200, so we're going to add it on. Money has come into our bank, hasn't it? Still leaving us with an overdraft of £420. As simple as that. However, our trade receivables, abbreviated slightly, um, they've, they've given us money. and So essentially, people who owed us money no longer owe us money, do they? So we have to decrease the amount, don't we, of people who owe us money. So 5110 take away 1,200. Because we think we thought we were owed 5,110 pound, but we don't anymore because someone's repaid us. They don't owe us the money anymore, do they? So it's as simple as that. It goes down 3910 current asset balance sheet. Simple as that. And finally, working seven, a debtor balance of 400 pound is to be written off. Someone who owed us money can no longer owe, can no longer pay us the money. That's a bad debt, isn't it? So the bad debt equals four hundred. So that instantly implies an expense, doesn't it? Bad debt's an expense. Profit is going to decrease, isn't it? We've got more expenses. Twenty nine seven zero is my most recent profit update. I'm just going to take away four hundred from that, aren't I? And that's going to give me twenty nine three ten. But 
what else does a bad debt? Uh, what else does it do? What does it affect? Bad debts. Uh, the people who owe us money are the people who are going to pay us this money, aren't they? And these people, this debtor balance, can't pay us money. So people who owe us money can't pay money. So trade receivables must decrease, surely. Someone who's meant to pay us money can no longer pay us money, can they? So we have to decrease our trade receivables. So three nine ten. I'm taking the figure from our working six, not from here. That five one one zero is gone now. I'm just going to take off four hundred pound, leaving me with three thousand five hundred and ten pound. So that's my workings done. Um, basically, everything I have now essentially is ready for the balance sheet. So let's just throw it all into the balance sheet and see how it does. Um, and hopefully it balances. And if it balances, hopefully it's balanced at the right figure and we get all the marks. So I've just laid out um, the skeleton of the balance sheet just to not waste any of your time or waste any of my time. Um, I don't want the video to be too long, do I? So the only non-current asset we have that we've dealt with is this motor vehicle isn't it, that we worked on in part 3 or point 3. I believe it's motor vehicles, plural, yep. And um, we got a net book value of 7360, didn't we? So we'll just put that in there. That's the only non current asset, just leave it, that's fine. So, what current assets do we have? Well, we dealt with some inventory in working for, clothing inventory. It's an asset, we can sell it, it can make us money. We also have some prepayments, that's also plural. We may we have dealt with a prepayment in working too, but we also have another one here, don't we? We have a prepaid expense here. So we're just going to add them up. That's all we need to do. Not too difficult. And we have our trade receivables, of course. So inventory, what was it? Seventeen six forty. I'm just lifting it out of my workings. Um. Prepayments, okay, so I have a prepayment of 1600 already, and I have another one here of 600, so it's just plus 600, 2200 pound, simple, 2200 pound, trade receivables, well, where is it, 3510, right at the bottom of my workings, total that all up, and you're getting 23. 50. So, just for the sake of uh, making it simple, uh, I'm just going to add the assets together to get total assets. So, 30.0710. Don't have to do that, it just makes it easier for you guys to understand where I'm getting all my figures from and how they all add up together. So, current liabilities. So, we have some accruals from working one, don't we? Um, And you'll notice the same case as what occurred with the prepayments. We've worked out an accrual here, haven't we? 1210. But we've also got another here in the additional information. So just make sure you're always checking to see if there are any more um, accruals, prepayments, etc. etc. We have our trade payables, of course. We didn't edit them, but. Um, they are in the additional information. We have that loan, which I said earlier was a current liability, because we pay it back within 12 months. And we have our bank overdraft, of course. So, the accruals I just calculated is 1620. Trade payables on the question paper, 6490. The loan, four thousand pound current liability. Let's bring that up, and the bank overdraft ended at four hundred and twenty. So that comes to twelve five thirty, I believe. So our net assets, which is just assets, take away liabilities, is just eighteen one. Eight oh. So if our equity, or you can call it finance by, um, equals eighteen one eight oh, we should have got it right. So capital, well, 
1st of May 2009, 15720. 15720. Profit, see, this is obviously if you hadn't edited our profit all the time, this just wouldn't balance, would it? Because we'd be throwing 36,000 in, wouldn't we? And our final profit figure is 29,710. So, uh, sorry, 29,310 down here, sorry. So obviously it's what is nearly seven thousand pound away, so it just wouldn't balance if it weren't for us editing all these uh, accruals, prepayments, depreciations into the profit figure. So profit is twenty nine three ten. And my drawings didn't do anything with that, did we? You don't usually do. It's right here, twenty six eight fifty. And that's always taken away, isn't it? It's the opposite of capital. And that does come to 18180. So we balance brilliantly. So that's it essentially. That is um, accounting one, June 2010, question three, part B. Uh, as I said, it's not on the AQA website. Um, just Google it. You'll find the question paper. You'll find the mark scheme. Um, but besides that, um, see you in the next video. Thank you.